told I said fantastic too much. So fantastic on you. Fantastic. That's right. It's one of my favorite things. Say it again. Fantastic. <laughs> And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world-famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am Chris. And I'm Christine, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Chris and Christine Show. do 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 What's happening? happening we are on the sixth episode you heard that right and i think he's gonna say it six times no <laughs> <laughs> but we're super excited for all of the support that we have from you all and we are in multiple countries now not just on multiple channels so chris do you want to tell everybody what countries have been streaming us this week yes so we have a list and it tells us what countries we're actually being played in and we are being played in the United States. Yep, yep. Obviously. Australia. Woohoo. Uh, good day, mate. And we have Canada. <laughs> what? <laughs> so funny. Okay, that's so stereotypical. I apologize to all of our friends in Australia. They don't really say good day, mate. They'll <laughs> say good day or they'll say hey, mate. But they don't say good day, mate. Am Are I right? Sure? I'll show you sure? friends. I'm 100%, 100% no. sure on that one. Another shrimp on the bobby. <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. He's in rare form tonight. FYI, we just had coffee because it's late at night. And yeah, we, we could drink coffee, coffee at night to get mm -hmm. this thing done because it's late and we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, US, Canada, Australia. Uh, oh, yeah, Spain yep. and. Um, Mexico. Mexico. I mean, there was some Mex Mexico uh, plays on our uh, thing there. So we saw that too. And that is fantastic. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you all you guys for listening. And make sure to um, pass the word along and uh, tell your buddies, hey, check us out. You know, and tell your corporate sponsors because we're always looking for corporate sponsors. Yes, our corporate con sponsors, actually their contracts expire like today. So <laughs> if you want to uh, you know, hook us up, that'd be great. <laughs> Our corporate sponsors of the K2 show San Diego. Yes, yes. <laughs> we're looking for new ones, so pass the buck around or, you know, how it goes. Yeah, so we're super excited for this week's podcast episode. We have a great lineup for you. But before we get into the hot topics, we have some exciting updates from this week. Chris, do you want to tell everybody what happened? Well, we have a little um, official announcement for everybody relating to Chris and Christine. Now, Chris and Christine have been dating for a while now. Yes, we have. I'm speaking to myself in a third person. But <laughs> um, yes, we've been dating for a while now. And um, last... Monday night. Last Monday night. That's right. Last Monday night, before we did the podcast, I decided to spring a little surprise onto Christine. He did. It was epic. Yes. You want to tell you what I did? Or what I did? Well, it involves something sparkly and Chris on one knee. Yes. If you can't figure that out, I actually proposed to Christine and she said yes. Obviously. I mean, he Obviously. wouldn't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a, an easy answer for sure. Yes. That was but it fantastic. was super fun. It was super spontaneous. I definitely didn't expect it and it was great. It was just the two of us and it was doing something that we loved. It was right before we recorded the episode. So we really thought like right after he do it, d right after he did it, sorry, uh, we really thought about like including it in last week's podcast, but we decided to wait until this week because we were the only ones that knew and we wanted to tell our family and our kids, of course, right before it was just like out in the public. Right. Because it feels like it's fair to everybody to kind of give them one, you know, tell them what's going on prior to us, like announcing it to the entire world and, um, and all that stuff, you know, yeah, it was super fun. It's been a super great week. And, for all of you that have recently gotten engaged, like what happens that first week you're engaged, you get hit with a ton of emotions and 
oh, it's just been, it's been a great week. It's been an emotional week and we're just really excited for this season. So before you start like messaging us and asking us, when's the date? Can we be invited? Can we invite like a reality TV show to film you guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we haven't set a date and we're not going to for a while. We really want to enjoy this season of engagement. And I think part of that goes to our story. We've shared a little bit before about both of us being previously married, right, Chris? Yeah, we both of us were actually married previously. And so the thought of marriage and the thought of being remarried again for both of us is very scary and it's a very intimidating thing. So we kind of don't take this very lightly, you right. know? Yeah, you know, we we both had a rocky past and we had a lot of hurts and traumas that we had to work through individually and things that we're still figuring out, like past hurts that might impact our relationship. And so we're trying to make sure we're two whole people before we walk down that aisle because we don't want to become a statistic. 67% of second marriages actually fail and we're not going to be one what? of them. 60 what did you say 67 67 percent yeah wow that's crazy that's, yeah. that's quite a high high odds yep. but um what i was gonna say was that uh you know both of us came from kind of like um we both kind of jumped into the marriage thing kind of earlier and younger and we weren't quite really fully developed as like far as like our knowledge of what we were doing you know we're kind of like we're rookies when we got married the first time and it kind of bit us you know and we both kind of um, had some bad experiences and i think now that we're older and we're wiser we're getting married a lot older now not young and dumb and so it kind of gives us some experience that we can use to um, be beneficial this time around i guess so to speak yeah definitely yeah we want to make sure that we take the time that we pause, we work through all of those things that come up so that they don't become bigger things once we are married. So right. thank you so much for your support, for everybody, for your kind words this week. It has been an amazing week and I'm super excited to look at this handsome hunk sitting across <laughs> from me right now and say, yeah. That's my future husband. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much. And you look beautiful tonight. And I love that she, if you can't see anything right now, guys, but I'm going to tell you something. She has a bedazzled, blinged out microphone <laughs> with a microphone stand. And she's got a pink microphone, like cap, popper, yeah. uh, a, a popper, topper. I don't know what it's called. It's like a fuzzy <laughs> thing goes on top of the microphone. It's pink, and she has her matching pink headphones. Oh, and she's got a coffee cup that's got a pink, what is that, a unicorn? It's a My Little Pony. Little, sorry, My Little Pony with a little rainbow coming out of its <laughs> butt or something. Or is it riding, oh, I'm sorry, it's riding a uh, rainbow. It's, yeah, she's dancing on the rainbow. So as you can see, she's all bedazzled, and she looks lovely. Aw, thank you. Oh, you got your ring on? Where's your ring at? I took it off while we were <gasps> recording <laughs> oh man i guess it ain't official anymore she took the ring off oh, okay well let's be real mason chris's youngest had hair gel in his hair tonight and so this is date night and on date night i'm here we get the kiddos ready for bed but we couldn't put mason to bed with gel in his hair and so chris and i had to like wrangle him in the bathroom wash his hair out with shampoo and I didn't want the ring to be on when I was getting ready to wash it. So I took it off. It's right by the sink right now. I no worries. No worries at all. Make sure you don't lose that. And don't drop it down the sink. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Fish that thing out somehow. I don't know how you can do that. Okay, cool. So we have an exciting show for you guys. Christine has some hot topics. And we are going to get to them next. The Chris and Christine Show is now on Instagram at... The K2 Show San Diego. Check out our latest pictures, videos, show teasers, and life updates on Instagram at The K2 Show San Diego. All right, Chris, and now it's time for Hot Topics. Do, 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 do. Fantastic. You know, I was told I said fantastic too much, so fantastic on you. Fantastic. That's right. It's one of my favorite things. Say it again fantastic <laughs> okay so tonight in hot topics we have two 
One is a hot topic and one is a list. We got so much positive feedback about lists last week. We're going to bring a list back. Are you ready? I am born ready, baby. What you got? So here's a fun story. Chris and I, we are talking about love tonight. So this story actually reminds me of one of my favorite movies from the early 2000s called The Wedding Date. Have you ever heard of that movie, Chris? I think I've heard of it. And I've probably seen it like in the background. Like somebody was watching it in the background. I was like, oh, hey, what's this? Okay. Oh, chick flick. Oh, never mind. And I walk away. But, um, <laughs> you know. It has Deborah Messing and Dermot Mulroney, two of my faves. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, this is a cute hot topic with a unique twist on what I like to refer to as a revenge date. Ooh, I yeah. like revenge. I like dates. You mm-hmm. put them together, it's like revenge date. So who got killed? <laughs> no. Oh. Not that kind. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. When Jessica Huey found out her ex-boyfriend would be a groomsman at a wedding she was attending, she felt she needed to not just show up, but show him up too. What? You know that whole like... Oh, I'm going to show you what you lost. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Huey so she got went, like dressed dolled up. I'm sure like beautiful. Though, oh, right? I'm sure she oh, did. Oh, yeah. But the problem was she didn't have anybody to go with her. Now, she, had no, she had no boyfriend, no date, nothing? No, she didn't have a boyfriend. So oh. she went on Craigslist and she put this ad that says seeking devilishly handsome, good humored date. Wow. Yeah. Devilishly handsome. So that's like that's on, gutsy. on Craigslist on Craigslist. Now that's gutsy because any guy that responds has to think he's devilishly handsome. Of course. And what guy? <laughs> I mean, guys going, gosh, now you're talking a big, taking a big gamble too. Um, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So here's where the story is. And it's, there's a punchline to it that just happened, but This happened back in 2013, September 2013, when she discovered that her ex would be at the same wedding a month later. And so she decided to post this ad on Craigslist looking for this devilishly handsome wedding date who would help make it clear that she was just doing just fine in life, that she didn't need this other guy. So within the first meeting with this guy named RJ, who was one of the men that responded to the Craigslist ad. How many men men responded? I don't know. How many men do you think responded? I don't know. I would say five. No, I'd say more than that. Well, I don't know. Maybe five that she actually like vetted. Maybe. I don't know. She probably got a bunch of... Oh, yeah. Un- unsolicited randos. pictures and mm-hmm. things of that sort. Yeah, randos. That's right. That's what I like to call them. But after she met RJ Steiger, or Steiger, I don't know how to say his last name, it was clear that she might not be pretending. After all, the two went to the wedding. They ended up dating after that. No way. Falling in love. No way. And just this summer, they got married. No way. Yeah. And was the ex at the wedding? Like showing her up <laughs> with his new chick. He's got. He's like, Let me show you revenge date. Let's see how this. And then it keeps out. going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, I don't know, but I thought that was pretty funny. How do you feel about that? Oh, that just seems weird. Now I seen a picture of this girl on the uh, article, and she's not that ugly. So you went. Oh my gosh, this. she was beautiful, you guys. She was beautiful. But That's my point. Yeah. My point is, is that, that when you hear about the story, you immediately think of, well, this chick can't get a date or whatever. She can't get a boyfriend for some reason. There's a problem that she has to pay, like, not pay, but, like, quote, unquote, go on Craigslist and ask for a guy. But that's not the case at all. It's kind of weird, you know? Well, I I think of this, like, if you think of it, it started in 2013. It's kind of like the early stages of online dating. I mean, I know no, it's online... not. Dating. I like dating for forever. I don't know. Online dating has been around since, like, AOL was been around. So I wonder why she didn't go to, like... A dating app. Maybe she just needed somebody quick, and she Money. just was willing it, to dating... pay for a date because she may, maybe she just was out of a relationship and didn't really want another relationship. Do you think that's oh, what, I know it was? what happened? What? Okay, I actually, what happened? She just bought something off Craigslist, and she was already on the website. <laughs> so she's like, "Well, I'm already here. Oh, look at this personal ads. Click, click. You know." And then she's like, "Oh, I'll fill something out real quick. Oh, free." You're speaking my love language, baby. Click, <laughs> click. You know, send away. And I bet you a lot of the guys she got up were probably like, "Hey, um, I'm calling about the wedding date. Um, 
quiet mom on the phone <laughs> you know uh, she'll be like so what are your interests uh uh video games right i could play fortnite like all night long and call of duty hey do you like call of duty too because i like that too you hey, know? hey hey don't not call of duty too there's some really cool people that like it well i'm sure they do this guy could be one of them <laughs> who knows you know all right. All that to say, you never know where you're going to find love. That's you just right. got to be open to it. Right. And be careful if you're posting on Craigslist. Oh, so gosh. Jessica got lucky oh, and she, she found did. a great guy. But we've heard some really bad experiences of people on Craigslist and people online robbed. Sites. I mean, people yeah. get robbed over like a TV or something. Yeah. Trying to sell a TV on Craigslist and you get, and get it robbed. Yeah, you know? so she was really lucky, really fortunate. So all that to say, it was a very interesting story to us as we were talking about love, how it started as a revenge date, but I guess she had the last word. Right, but I wonder that like, like now, this I wonder what this dude is thinking too. When he like responds to this thing and he actually goes through with it, is he thinking, okay, I'm just being used, so this isn't gonna go anywhere. So at least I'm getting a free meal out of it, maybe a dance, maybe a, maybe it's open bar at the wedding, maybe a drink or two. So that's probably like his, you know, I thinking. Right. I I don't know. I was thinking about that too. Like what made me, what would make a guy be like, yeah. I'm devilishly handsome. I could use 200 bucks Well, take, take the handsome part out of the equation. Just think guy in general. Don't think like, oh, well, handsome. Because I'm sure a lot of guys who think they're handsome are probably showing up at her door. You know? <laughs> and they're, she's probably like, nah, never mind, never mind, never mind. And um, this guy's, I mean, this guy, I seen the picture of the dude too. He's not bad looking, you know? I no, mean, what he you was think? pretty handsome. Yeah. So it almost seems fake. Oh! <gasps> I wonder if the story is fake. Mm, we're going to need to do some digging. Okay. It was Jesse, Jessica, Huey, and RJ Steger, S-T-I-E-G-E-R. -E -E yeah, yeah. So if you guys can do some like sleuth work, be detectives, get us the intel. And if you can find an actual wedding photo of them That's and true. send it to well, us. If there was an article on this, there has to be like. I didn't see the wedding uh, photos. But if somebody can find the wedding photo, you can either post it on our Chris and Christine show Facebook page. You can tag our Instagram or you can email it to us. We may just have a Starbucks gift card in it for you. What? Yes. I want a Starbucks gift card. Yeah, what, you, what, what, what do I get? <laughs> I make you coffee all the time. I buy you coffee all the time. That's true. I just yeah. had some Starbucks. We just, just had now. some coffee. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, well, that's your challenge, people. Find us the wedding picture and you know, find I, the details. I was thinking uh -huh. a lot of people actually like do crazy, stupid stuff like this just to get like their 15 minutes. You that's know? true. It's like my 90 day fiance or stuff like that. Like the people that or uh, married at first sight. Have you seen that show? What? Married at first sight. How did that work? They get oh, married? It's crazy. They don't know each other. They both agree to be on this reality TV show. They walk down the aisle. Wait, so be prior to that happening, they don't They've know each other. They've never met each other. No, no pictures, no nothing. 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 They show up walking down the aisle. The groom's there. You get to watch his expression and he's like either, oh my gosh, she's gorgeous or like, that's not what I signed up for. And they get married on the spot and then they have to live together. And no. then like after 30 to 60 days, they get to decide whether they're going to stay together or not. Do they have to get like an annulment or something? Um, it just depends on the nature of their marriage. Um, that's on television. Do they just, is it all, everybody's no, gorgeous, right? No. No. Oh, what? All kinds of people. Really? Yeah. It's all not, kinds of people. It's not like the episode of The Bachelor where it's like everybody is like a 10 Plus, like no. every girl, every guy, gorgeous. Normal people, normal people, normal jobs. So they'll have like, there could be like a biochemist and a math teacher. It's a whole def a whole bunch of different people, but people do do stuff for fame. So I don't know if that's what this story was specifically, but I think that we could definitely have a Starbucks card in it for somebody that does a little of digging work for us. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry. I said fantastic too many times. <laughs> well, here's one more time. Fantastic. <laughs> Spectacular and amazing. All wrapped up. There yep. you go. It's your little fantastic And I bet sandwich. this guy, I bet this guy that met this chick, uh, Jessica, for the first time, he probably said, 
fantastic. <laughs> The Chris and Christine Show is available everywhere on Google Play with Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. All right. And so now we're going to go on to hot topic number two. This Justin from Business Insider. Business Insider? Yeah. Business Insider, and it's Ooh. a list about relationships. Are you ready, Chris? Oh, this is uh, staying on point with all of our uh, discussions tonight. Yeah. So this list is called Eight Signs You're in a Strong Relationship, Even If It Doesn't Feel Like It. Ooh, okay. What you got? So sometimes people question whether or not they're actually in a strong relationship, but thanks to this new list, we have that answer for you. So get ready to see how many of these items you check off. Now, a word of caution, and Business Insider did say, caution, please. Ooh, if what you are they warning about? If you don't check all of these items, it doesn't mean that you don't have a strong relationship, but it can serve as a list of reminders to... Keep pushing forward. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. It's like, uh, hey, you didn't, you didn't score a hundred percent, but you got like a eighty-five. Right. So it's not saying you're weak. It's just saying here's a couple of more things to consider. Number okay. one. Okay. Number one. Number one of the signs you're in a strong relationship. Okay. Number one, you think about your partner often when you're not together. Oh, yeah, that is true. I do think of Christine all the time when I'm working because I work at night and I'm not home at night to see her. So and she's not home. She's work, home at night. Just the opposite. Not be able to see me. So, yeah. So sometimes I send a text message and I'm like, hey, just thinking about you. And when you get those, Chris, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel excited. It makes me feel kind of like um like, oh, gosh, I got to respond, but I'm kind of busy putting fires out. But uh, <laughs> when I get a chance to, I do. You yeah, know? you do. You're pretty good about it. I mean, we text back and forth uh, when you get up in the morning and then, like, when you're in the swing of things at night. And it's nice when sometimes I'll be in the middle of doing schoolwork at home and I'm studying and I'm really stressed out. And then I'll get a little, hey, with, like, a little kissy face emoji. Oh, yeah. Just thinking about you. And it's like, oh. That's the best thing ever. And they have the all one too. And I've used that one too. It's like hearts yeah. floating around the face or something. Yeah. It's really cute. Emojis are fun. Or bitmojis. We like to send oh, bitmojis yeah, back that too. and forth. I haven't done, actually, I haven't done that in a while really. And I think about it. Yeah. But uh, we, should do, we always do the um, regular um, emojis. Yeah. We do the regular emojis. But it's nice to know that you're thought of when you're not together. It just makes you feel like you're missed, right? Right. And we're not together like all the time. We're not, we don't have one of those relationships where we're like, you know, with each other, by each other's side, like every minute of right. every day. Yeah. You know, but it's, I think that's, that's kind important of... for people to know that we're part like five days a week. Right. Yeah. Which we will talk about on item number three, but item number two on this list, you were spying respond positively to each other's good news i would hope so i yeah. mean yeah you know like you get super excited about if the other person say got a raise at work or whatever it may be yeah. it's one thing i think of right now but like say you got something it's positive news you're like yes it's, it's fantastic because whatever good news either what person um gets it kind of benefits both you in the long That's run right. mm -hmm. and i can remember just like a month and a half ago i got accepted into this exclusive leadership academy and chris was like I don't quite know what that means, but I'm super excited for you. <laughs> and that's all I needed is I don't always need him to know everything about everything. He doesn't have to know. Like when I talk to him about, oh my gosh, this new district came on board with this new data project. And he's like, wow, that sounds amazing. And I'm like, it's a big deal. I'm just letting you know. And he's like, yeah, then I'm excited about it. And so for me, it's like super validating that even if he doesn't understand it, he can right. like right. jump on the happy ship with me. Of course. And yeah. she does the exact same thing for me too. So it goes swings both ways, which is a good thing. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be like really significant, huge things. Actually, the most frequent celebrations we have are right after Chris's Tuesday grocery trips. What was that? What about that? Five fours? No. Okay. I get groceries every <laughs> Tuesday and I get super excited when like I save money at the store. So whenever it was a deal, like I shop pretty much exclusively 
all the deals. Like my grocery receipt just has like the bottom section says money saved. And that number gets bigger. I get super excited. I'll even take a picture of it. And you'll send it to me while I'm working. I think I've even posted on Instagram (laughs) before too, my savings. I think I did one. I think my biggest saving one time was like 95 bucks. I saved at the store. Super excited. Told everybody. And, and so when you celebrate each other's or respond positively to each other's good news, it doesn't always have to be like a job promotion. Sometimes it's getting like an amazing deal in the like five for five dollars section of the grocery store. No, it's store. not five. Okay. A correction. I call it's it five not, fours. No, it's not how it goes. It's like, <laughs> it's the five for five deal. It's like, it's like That's there's a set. No, you said five for five dollars or something. Oh. No, it doesn't how it works. It's like, it's like this way it works. It's, there's a set regular price that's uh-huh. on sale, uh-huh. right? But if you buy five or more, I think it says, yeah, five. Oh, then, then it you goes get down. it for even lower of a price. Oh. But you gotta buy five of these mm-hmm. big items, like five cases of a Coke, or five milks, or five things of eggs, or five boxes of cereal. You know? So who needs all that? That's the problem. But I get right. excited because I buy it because I get all excited. Five jugs of ice cream, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Welcome to my world, people. (laughs) But that's okay. Respond positively when the other person has good news, including great grocery store discounts. Okay, number three, you spend some time apart. Now, this is our reality. This is like our life. We spend time apart. That's all we do is spend time apart. Right. Four or five days a week. So what it does is it allows us to miss each other. It, right. And I think that's a really healthy component to a relationship. It is. And it sometimes it's overlooked in like a marriage is giving each other enough space to be oh, able yeah. to say, oh, gosh, I really missed my person. Right. You can't miss anybody if you're always with them. That's my thought. Right. And it's not saying like go leave your, your spouse for five weeks or whatever. We're just saying... Figure out a way to get away, clear your head. It allows you to come back to the relationship even more refreshed. That's why, like, my mom and my my mom taught me growing up um, through her marriage that being able to, like, go to women's retreat or something like that, she called it marriage insurance because she'd be able to, like, get away, um, go and learn with other ladies, learn about her relationship and come back together. And it was just such a positive thing. So that's just um, item number three. Okay. Awesome. Number four, you have a similar sense of humor. Well, you kind of have to, you know, like if I say something kind of funny and Christine's like, huh? I don't get it. Right. Or are you trying to explain things? Like if you have to explain a joke, oh. it's not funny. No, or, it's not. Or the person receiving the joke on the other end has no sense of humor. Either way, it's not a good fit. Right. Or if they take it wrong and then they like, oh, they get super offended. Oh, Oh, gosh. They get mad, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just a joke. I was just kidding. So, a good thing, like, when you're dating, find opportunities to be able to laugh together and see if your humor is compatible because laughter is really important in a relationship. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, item number five, you split chores evenly. And we were actually having this conversation over dinner. We had the boys, Jacob and Mason, with us tonight. And so at dinner time, we were like, okay, Jacob and I are going to clear the table and clean up after dinner. And Chris and Mason were getting ready to go feed the dog because that's what Mason loves to help him do. But I think it's really important in a relationship that you split chores evenly. Right. You're trying to have like a... Because... I mean, one person or the other is always going to get angry if one person or the other is doing nothing and one person is doing everything. No matter what kind of relationship you're in um, or who you're with, it's just the way it is. You might build up and get resentment and right. stuff too. So you try to do things equally. And I know that um, when it comes to like like finances, it's kind of different. It's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about like the chores of like – household stuff you clean this i clean that i'll do this you do that and it's all big team right right and i think this is a change from like old school because a lot of times in maybe old school mentality it was the woman having to do a lot of the heavy lifting but that's one of the unique things about the relationship that chris and i have is we both had to run our own separate households and care for our kids and keep things clean and so now it's hey 
who likes to do what the most? I actually enjoy doing dishes. Chris likes doing laundry. So we've talked about when we blend our families, how we can trade that off and he can, you know, do the laundry. Can I get an amen out there, ladies? Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So number six, you try new things together. Yeah. I don't know. Have we tried anything really new? Like crazy new? Um, well this, the podcast. Okay. 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 And I would say that that's like, this has been really fun for us to do together. Like learning all the technical stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Trying to figure this thing out and trying to like, um, make it all work and mash mm -hmm. up, you know, like I didn't know what I was doing when I first did this. She didn't know what she was doing and I I didn't really know what to do. And, um, just kind of figuring it out. We're kind of walking along and figuring out as we went. Yeah. And I think like when we went to Zion and we went glamping and then we went like hiking through the canyon, that was a new thing for us to do together. And we got to like discover new stuff. Fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry. I said it too many times. (laughs) Um, Number seven, you don't have a lot of extreme downturns in your relationship. Okay. What does that mean particularly, you think? So I think it's like you don't have like low, low lows where you're like always on the break, uh, on the brink of breakup or like super high highs. It's like um, likes of peak, lots of peaks and valleys. Well, this says downturns. I mean, this is saying downturns. downturns. Well, that would be like. I hate your guts. You're you're dead to me. I don't have nothing to do with you. We're right. broken up, and then you guys get back together like a and week everything's later. happy, or pretend to be happy. But right. you, everybody holds resentment to each other. Anyone, you know, right? And so, not having those extreme downturns is really important. It doesn't mean there's not conflict. I mean, Chris and I get heated, and we work through it. I mean, we have disagreements, but we don't walk out the house. We don't like take off. We take a break, come back together figure it out and move forward and we don't hold grudges. That's one of our commitments to each other. Yeah, I don't usually ever hold grudges, but what I do do from Christine and past relationships I've been in is I do blow up. I'm like a, what do you call it? Fire, like a firework or something. I just like a boom, you know, and get all like hated fast. But then I drizzle, I like fizzle out. Like the firework kind of fizzles in the sky. Yeah. I kind of fizzle out. You're working on that people. What? We're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I goes, go, boom, I get all excited and my anger gets to, it's like the temper, like zero to 60, like real right. quick. But right. then I don't hold grudges and I don't like, like I'm kind of get over it fast. Right. And that goes to number eight, it's, which is, you know how to recover from a fight. Yes. And for us, our recovering from a fight is always having resolution. So it's like a, hey, I'm sorry. I was wrong. And then the other person reciprocates. We all own our own junk and we don't simmer on it. (laughs) (laughs) Fan. Oh, sorry. Spectacular. I got to change it up a little bit. Yes. But I think that's really important because some people don't know how to recover from a fight. And I mean, I'm not going to get preachy or anything. And I know not everybody is like, has the same faith background as us, but there is a Bible verse that says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And that's something that I really try to put into practice in our relationship is like, not just the sun down physically, but like, we've got to resolve it before we move on to the next thing. And yeah, we just figure out how to recover from a fight. Bingo. You yeah. said it perfectly. That makes sense. It makes hopefully makes sense to all you out there listening in uh, podcast land. Yeah. So that was the list of the eight signs you're in a strong relationship. So we'd love to hear from you. Are there other signs that you're in a strong relationship that we didn't mention? Send them our way. Perfect. All right. And are you ready, Chris? We're going to get ready to wrap up here in the next couple minutes with okay, Would okay, You okay. Rather. Okay. What you got? All right. I'm going to ask you this one. Oh, okay. Okay. aligned with our topic of love Ooh. for tonight. Would you rather find true love or be rich? Well, let me tell you, sweetheart, if you were rich, true love would find you and a lot of them would find you. <laughs> knocking at your door yeah have you ever heard that phrase you can't buy love no actually <laughs> <laughs> money, can't, money can't buy you happiness uh no i think it was just the opposite i think money <laughs> does buy happiness no. if you have a lot of it um you have a lot of fake people around you that's that is true now this thing does say true love that is the quotation part around this equation um 
So I think I probably find rather have true love, to be honest with you. Oh. I know. I now know. the question is, Chris, have you found true love? Absolutely. And I'm looking at her right over there, oh. across the way, in the other side of the studio, up on the platform. By the way, you guys can't see this at home or wherever you're listening, but um, in the K2 studios, we have a multiple level studio set up here. <laughs> I'm down here by the control bo booth, and um, Christine is actually on the stage. She's up high, two, like a two level platform up top. On her little microphone stand. Yeah, so he's literally put me on a pedestal. I did, and there <laughs> she is. That's what I was trying to get at, right there. Ta -da! Yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate those sweet words. I'm super excited that we got to announce our engagement tonight on the K2 show. And thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to follow us, subscribe, and share. We would love to announce new countries next week and new cities in the U.S. And thanks Perfect. so much for everything, everybody. That sounds awesome. Okay, guys. Thank you guys so much. And have you all have a great and fantastic week. We'll see you guys next week. Remember this week that life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said that it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward.